All right, welcome everybody, everybody who's live, me and Steve. Welcome everybody who's going to watch this on a replay. What we're going to do is we're going to go through this. Um, I, got, I got about 20 minutes of film here cut up uh, from the national championship game. And um, what my plans are is to go through and talk about it. And then I'm going to have my editors uh, splice in clips. And I'm going to experiment with this idea of uh, perhaps being able to, if I'm, if I'm mentioning a particular skill or more importantly, a particular drill um, that might teach something or a part of the, or a part of the uh, um, uh, coach's training program that this pertains to, I, I just want to see if I can create um, a, a mechanism for people to like, from an entertainment value, be able to watch a game like this, to be able from an educational perspective, be able to, to learn and relate it back, but also to be able to see if we can um, enhance it with some extra video clips and editing. So we're, we're gonna experiment uh, open for all suggestions. So uh, let's kind of get this going. So Yale really played a pretty interesting, they've been playing a lot of one for one and in this game, they really played more of sort of like a, a pairs type of offense. Uh, 44 was getting shut off a bit, they're Canadian. And um, they really don't want to slide off that guy very much. Um, and, um, and as a result, um, you know, they were, they were playing this sort of, you know, you can see there's a, a, a sort of a pick right here. And then it, and it looks like a deuces actually, but I think most of the time it was kind of pairs. So let's take a look at this first clip. Um, you can see that, um, they end up sliding, you know, Duke was kind of slow to slide, uh, good little slide and recovery. I love the way that they flow right into a big little with a pass down, pick down, a uh, slip, but but to be able to get into a big little behind is a really smart thing to do. Now, here's where it gets pretty interesting, where their 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 pairs look starts to to, and again, you might call it a deuces if you want to, but later on it's more of a pairs. Um, but you're going to see this little uh, uh, follow. They're baiting this guy to slide or not slide, and you can see that this midfielder is dodging hard, turning the corner. And shooting a shot that I think that Duke probably wishes was saved because it really wasn't a lot of angle. Um, but what I do want to say, though, is that, uh, first of all, when you, you know, end up sort of mirroring with the guy that they don't want to slide off of, it allows you to dodge physically and get right to the net, which is pretty cool. Um, but the other thing is, is that, and I've been watching a lot of this lately because I'm up in Canada, but, you know, this midfielder could have hard pumped. Um, and if he would have hard pumped a pass to X or hard pumped a shot early, I think he could have actually uh, kind of walked in with a lot more angle. Um, than what he's settled for right there. I mean, that was a, uh, you know, a great shot and all, but um, it was not probably a shot that most people want. Um, here, um, Duke's running their typical stuff um, in which they're either running their pairs looks or they're running their one three two that really morphs into a one four one. Sixty six is doing a little uh, shuffle hesitation. I love this way of dodging. It allows you to create hesitation moves. He's nice and close to his man. Um, if you look at how close he is, um, he's just outside of his man's ability to jack him. Um, he can get a quick step. Um, and sometimes you actually get a little bit of a step before you make your move because if, if your man lets you go a little bit as you're shuffling. Um, little, little subtle look back fake. Yale slides quickly um, and Duke just keeps moving the ball. And now here's the freshman. Again, he gets nice and close to his guy, but not close enough that, that they can get a, a chunk of him. And this defender on him is one of the best teammates in the country he's going to play. Pro lacrosse this summer and is a total beast. Um, notice that Yale um, is not allowing the easy pass to the uh, to Manal behind the net. They're shutting him off. I don't think that they'd freak out if, if he got the ball. It's not that they're shutting him off because he's you know the best player on the field, but more rather they, they know he likes to dodge. They'd rather not give him an easy dodge, and they're going to make it hard, particularly when he's behind the net. Here, Yale's just uh, playing such great help defense. I mean, look at the posture of these guys. 
Um, their heads are turning. Um, you're seeing, I mean, w w watch, watch this defender in here we're trying to find this guy. He's reading the play. This defender on the ball is playing a strong V hold position, but do you notice how the defender on the ball has, as he's in his V hold position here, his hips are slightly behind the, those of the attackman. And this is an important part of the technique because if your hips are upfield in a V hold, the guy is going to have an easy inside roll. And if you can keep your hips slightly behind in a really strong position, if he tries to inside roll, there's nothing there. Um, and he's able to try to, you know, you see a lot of, a lot of coaches say don't windshield wipe and, and swing on the backside. Some of these guys, when they're in that nice position, they can kind of swing and put a little pressure on you um, uh, on the backside. And then he gets his V hold back. Um, and then just a really nice job showing recovering. Um, great stick work right here. Uh, th this, this defenseman, I think he's an extra kid, not the fastest guy. Great, good body, good size, really smart, really skilled, great off the ground. Um, but you, you can see that he's not going to beat anybody up the field. So what he does immediately is start heading towards the sideline and he's faking like he's going to give it back. And he's, he, he, he fakes essentially, it's like a fake backhand. He's faking it back. He's getting the riding attackman to take a, a, a bad angle and he's able to turn it up the field. So that was pretty cool play. Um, honestly, if you, it, there are drills. Um, I, I watched the Carolina pregame drill um, that you should, that we're going to show you, but it's, there's some great drills where you can kind of work on that escape uh, stuff for your defenseman. A lot of a lot of fades out of the Yale team. Um, you can see that they pop behind the dodge, and then when the dodge starts coming back at him, he fades back. It really puts uh, this defenseman in a tough spot. So, you know, they go with uh, you know kind of a little bit of an overload on that side, um, and you can see this defender's right in a position to slide. And now, as the ball starts getting dodged right at him, he starts his back pedal, and it allows this attacker to actually get into a position where maybe he can beat this guy now a great approach by duke to be able to keep that from happening a, a really interesting technique though um, that i learned from watching austin stats is that when you hitch multiple times you can sometimes you know when you hitch one time in face dodge you can be played a little bit more easily than if you catch and hitch once like you're going to shoot because you'll cause this guy to take an angle right at you and then hitch again and they'll, lit, they'll lunge at you with their stick because that's their lead poke. And it allows you then to face dodge over. Um, sometimes when you take the immediate face dodge, um, it, it actually allows them to kind of play your momentum a little bit. You can see he's got a step, but he's being played. So you can turn your wind up moves into double moves with double hitches. Defense playing pretty physical. 
whacking the snot out of them. But it's a national championship game, so rightfully so, no flag. Interesting how soft Duke plays this right here. This defender's backing off to, geez, I mean, where does he make contact here? I mean, he doesn't ever make contact, but he's dropped himself into by 11 yards. When you look at um, Ben Reeves, who obviously is just an outstanding player, I look at him and I say, you know, as, as great as he is, and he is great, um, there's things that he could do to be even better, which is pretty awesome. You know, he makes his move just outside of the guy's ability to jack him, runs through the stick, gets a nice step. But personally, I think that if he were to use hesitation moves in the vein of a Kevin Rice on his way in here, um, and you're going to see this throughout the film, but I think if he used hesitation moves and fakes right here, he could actually get his man to slow down and have an even better step and, and, and actually be able to get shots off maybe without, without being checked. So, so here they do flow into a, a little bit of a, what turns into a one for one setup um, with a sort of a top center dodge. And, um, you know, this is one of the, the crazy things, you guys. You know, everybody has a tendency to want to attack the shorts, attack the shorts. Um, and when you attack poles, especially if you run towards their V-hold side, um, a lot of times if you go hard enough, you just put them in a bad spot. And this guy, you know, because he doesn't use his V-hold, he puts himself in a terrible spot. The only thing he really has would be a trail check. And he's not looking for that. He looks for a weak little wrap, backside wrap check. And then, man, did these guys just shoot the lights out of Yale did. Um, pretty impressive. Pretty cool little flow uh, from Reeves on a dodge right up into what ends up being a, a little one four one dodge. And it's, it's really tough. You know, they don't want to slide off 44. Reeves just drops in. You know, they're hesitant to slide off him. And this kick just goes hard. So give credit to Yale for the way that they dodged um, and turned corners. I mean, they really did it amazing job with that so here's another example of all right so i like the way he starts his dodge i like the way he's shuffling into it getting his getting his uh little his, uh, sort of uh, shuffle hesitation going um but then he he turns the corner um and to me, if he if he bodies his guy right here, okay, and then and then causes causes his man to initiate contact, he'd bounce into space, and then he'd be able to be faking passes and manipulating the defense. And I think this is one of the one of the developments we're going to see over the course of the next five years that's going to be really interesting. You're seeing a lot more redodging than you did in the past. You're seeing a lot more faking. Um, but I really think that when you make this move right now, instead of running all the way down um, and losing your angle, I think that he could have turned the corner right there. He's biting this guy, but he could have bounced into space and then started using fakes to be able to get himself where he wanted to go. Last point is, is that if you ever hard pump right now, if you hard pump like you're shooting, this guy who's pushing you, if you hard pump right now, he doesn't know if you don't have the ball. This is what Canadians do all so well all the time. And when you hard pump and kind of hold it there early enough, this man who's looking to help won't. And this guy who's pushing you won't know you don't have it. And it allows you to turn the corner and be able to bury it even with your right hand on like a twister type of a shot, if you don't want to put it back into your left hand. I love the camera angles in the national championship game. It's pretty awesome. So Yale ran a fair amount of three, three, and they did either a two man sort of carry shallow cut uh, on one side and a three man rotation on the other side versus Duke's five man rotation. So they did a lot of this carry shallow, with their two man and they were kind of looking for skip passes. And then on the other side, you're going to see a three man rotation. Um, and obviously because they've got three righties and three lefties. So whenever they have a lefty out top, 
they'll do two man stuff on this wing and three man stuff on this wing, and vice versa. They can run at both sides. They kept it pretty simple. There's a pretty nice play that we're going to show you later that they did run. Um, but obviously when you start carrying people around and you get perfect spacing, you're going to start being able to find some skip passes. And that's really what, what they were doing as they were doing this. I mean, that, that shot right there was, I guess was okay. It seemed like probably about a 14 yard shot. So I didn't love that, but I did like what Yale was running. And it goes to show you just how simple you can keep it. Um, you don't have to be, uh, super, um, um, you know, intricate with all your looks. So here, same thing. Uh, perfect spacing with this guy stepping here, causing this defender to have to worry about this adjacent and that skip pass as best that he can. And you're seeing a little bit of an exchange out of these two guys here uh, during the course of this carry. And then Reeves is able to send a skip pass right through. So no goal, but a nice look. That was pretty sweet. So this is what I meant when I was saying it's really interesting. It's like it's almost like they were running this. It was kind of a pairs look, but it had a had a fifth player in there. Um, so maybe you don't call it that. It's a sort of a box lacrosse type of offense, but you can see that these two guys are occupying their guy. These two guys are playing a pair, but they're keeping Reeves and sometimes 44 in this low crease spot because they have a hard time. They don't want to slide off these guys. So here, this defender just really doesn't do a great job because he, he just shows too much off of Yale's Canadian um, got at the best play, the best finisher on the team. And this kid, you know, from a slide decision perspective, what, what should you be reading if you're a def defensive player? Well, did he get a good chunk? Yeah. Uh, can you see the uh, are you, what are you looking at the backs uh, the fronts of his numbers the backs of his numbers or the side I mean if you're this guy you should be reading this guy is going nowhere and you really don't need to be showing at all but unfortunately for Duke uh, he did, he begins to show and it's just enough to be able to give um, God Ed his hands free and it looks like he does a little sort of combo twister leaner because look at that stick go low as the ball goes into the far corner. It's a pretty sweet shot. Duke was showing off those fades quite a bit, um, especially off this, on the sweeps. And um, you're going to see right here that sometimes they are, are shallow cutting past it and sometimes they're fading back. And if you show off a fade, you're putting yourself in a position where you might not get back to it, especially if this kid is, is, was able to uh, fade a little bit farther. I really like the way this moral kid plays. Um, I love his repertoire of moves. Watch this. He splits, stop and go, hard stop and go, rolls back. He does this rollback later in the game. He, he feeds a goal, but all of your attackmen should be learning how to dodge hard, stop and go. Okay, roll back and rolling back towards the end line at this angle is awesome because a lot of times, you know, if you show it all, you'll get these little C cuts and it's really easy to dodge, stop, go and roll back. That stop and go roll back is hard to, it's really hard to deal with. The truth of the matter is a stop and go roll back is, is should be an automatic uh, just doing a rollback is a little bit too easy to guard, but when you use a stop and go and a rollback, it's very, very hard to guard. The stop and go, let's think about this for a second, okay, guys? Why do you use stop and go? When you're being played really tight, use a stop and go. Use a rocker, use a hesitation. When you're being played tight, why? Because when they're playing tight and you stop, they stop, and then you can get a step, and that step either gets you where you want to go or it gets them to overrun you. There's, a, there's another uh, example of the ball gets kicked up. So Morrill kicks it up. And then what, what does Gaudet do from the other side of the field? He runs straight up at this dodge and mirrors it. Bates' guy into taking a little look. No goal, but that was a great, 
chance. There's that same feeding angle I was referring to it with Morrow. And, and watch, um, watch Reeves here, the way he pulls his stick in front. When can you pull your stick in front of your guy? Well, you can pull your stick in front when they're playing you, when you're going lefty and they're righties like this. Why? Because you can cut it back right in front of them. They, they, all they could get on you would be their, would be their uh, cross check or their, or their left glove. And that's what this defender tries to do. But because, um, because he's so afraid of, of Reeves' left hand, Reeves is able to sell it. And you can see how he bursts right into it. He bursts, cuts. And that's the same idea. Watch this subtle hesitation. See it? The subtle hesitation, the stop and go rollback works just as well as the stop and go cut back. And then all of a sudden they have to show a little bit and there's that beautiful feeding angle. And no shot for that on that one, but um, it's really, really good stuff. You always want to use stop and goes rather than just um, changes of direction. You'll get your man to overrun you. Here's what I mean with, with Reeves where I really think that he could do more with what he has here. He dodges in. He's, he's established position. If he uses some kind of a rocker, a behind-the-back fake, uh, a hesitation, um, I think he could have gotten his hands for more free um, because he got – they don't want to slide to him. He's too good of a feeder. Look, look where he's at. Um, he kind of rushed it and settled for a shot. Now, obviously, we're talking about the tour a ton winner. He's an unbelievable player, so we're not being too critical. But we might as well look at everybody's game. Here, a little mirror situation. They don't want to slide. Really physical dodging, and it's a characteristic of uh, you know of this whole game, this level of play. Um, Coach Towers talked about this as attacking their recovery. Look at him get his body in right there. Now, personally, I think he should be faking. Okay, if he gets in in hard pumps, there's a really good chance that he's. You, know, you watch the Canadians, watch Tahoka, watch Lyle Thompson, watch John Grant Jr. All these guys with the Canadian backgrounds, they start getting in here, and their fakes, uh, their fakes end up getting them freebies. You know how, like sometimes, you know, you can you can get a, a free off of like some kind of a hidden ball trick. You can get freebies off hard pumps too. They may not bite, bite on it, but there's no reason not to do it. Okay. But he gets himself into a nice spot. Uh, Yale with a nice, with a nice uh, decent recovery, slide recovery, and then not a great shot. Uh, I didn't think Duke shot that well in this game. But, man, they, you know, they, they, they play such poised offense, and they've got such physical players. It's pretty amazing. So let's look at this play. Um, gets as close, he gets as close to his guy as he could, jabbing left, and gets outside of him, and there's, there's no, you know, what, what should the defense be reading when they're talking about slide decisions? I mean, he does not get a chunk at all right here. This guy's turning the corner. I, I think this needs to be a slide. It wasn't, um, and Yale's able to get all the way in. Now, what could Yale have done even better, although I love the dodge? Yeah, well, he could have faked. Right now, he could look back, he'll slow down. He could hard pump towards X, okay, and then he would buy himself a little bit of time. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, it's fine. If you're, if you're two-handed enough to put this back into your left hand, great. But you could also turn that corner with your right hand, pump, 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 and then just twister that thing anywhere you want. So that should, should have been a goal. Really nice fade. Let's talk about this situation right here. So um, this is sort of a – this is a classic two out top. This is like a, you know, 2-2-2 uh, two, two, two or 1-3-2 two, two setup with the other wing fading, the crease um, mirroring. And um, when that happens, um, and you roll back to the middle, this is a really dangerous spot on the spot on the field. And, and I think sometimes we have to realize when we're running these sweeps and these fades that remember the worst case scenario is that you're rolling back dead center of the field and it's really hard to slide to. Uh, defenses don't really like to do that. You know, they did here, they slid to it um, and they slid off a guy they didn't really want to slide off of, but, um, but, 
but it's a, it's a really, really difficult thing to do is to slide when someone's rolling back in the middle of the field because they can always roll back on you again. Reeves establishing his position. Again, I, I think that if, if – just imagine with Ben Reeves' size, speed, vision, the way he shoots the ball, imagine if he faked more. Imagine if he used a little hesitation right there, a little rocker. Imagine if he was doing the John Grant Jr., the, the behind-the-back fakes. He'd score every time. Now, he had the shot he wanted in a lot of ways, but I still think faking is always better. So let's go back to the beginning of this dodge first. Um, I, I do like this, and I think it takes a lot of poise and, and intelligence to, to realize that, okay, we're going to initiate our dodge, a little, a little drift dodge and shuffle, and then we're going to go. We don't have anything. Then you slow down again, and you go again, and it puts you in a position where, you know, you ha you're, you're giving yourself multiple windows to beat your guy, and I really like that. And I think it's a good – there are good drills to do where you, where you run – Drift, run, change direction. Run, drift, run, change direction. Drift. Make your move. Good. And shoot it. Okay, so now we've got some double threat dodges and drift dodges. And this is where we're going to look to get real tight to our man and either square them up with jab steps or we're going to drift a little bit and the drift dodge happens more with shuffle. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Here, um, the player is going to dodge up and then drift with a shuffle, shuffle, and then make the move from there. I would have liked to have seen her be a little more physical on the dodge, but uh, what I like about it is like going from a run to a shuffle is a really good way it's in, in basketball it's called a, it's called a slide hesitation when you shuffle you can see how the player is kind of going up and down up and down and then you can like make moves i would have liked to have seen her initiate contact right there that would have been key and that's what you got to really work on kind of like we did in the, in the tight one-on-ones um i like the way that she's trying to get her shot off around her man um, i think the underhand sidearm shot is the way to go here we got a downhill drift and you see how you can sort of put together split dodges and split dodge rollbacks. So let's look at this one, one more time in real time. Drift, hesitation, hesitation, split, roll, rocker, gets the shot off. Um, I think you'll find that these drift dodges, and Kayla Trainer does this a lot, and she does a lot of splitting with it, but there's great opportunities to be creative in your dodging here. Here, um, you're going to see a nice little hesitation right there that allows her to get a nice roll back to the middle um, and a good opportunity for a screenshot. Here's a double threat position. Get as close as you can get. Jab a little bit. Jab. And then see if you can like shake your man and get a move. Uh, make a move. Get a shot off. Jab, jab, jab. Um, I want to try to... I need to teach the way to split dodge from this exact position here. It seems like it'd be hard because you're so close. But uh, if she were to slide her left hand while she's jabbing right, if she were to slide her left hand up to up the shaft to the top, she'd be able to pull her stick across underneath the stick that's going to be up of the defender. And it's going to allow her to make the move. Here's the classic example of a, a, a tough approach because you try to go for the loose ball. Probably should have been a slide there, uh, but those are tough. Those are kind of tough plays when that happens. This was kind of a cool little play that they ran for Ben Reeves. Um, so they, they put Ben Reeves on the crease fair, fairly often and try to set up his man to, to be a slider. And so you can see right here, he's, he's on the crease right there, number two. And his man is, you know, he doesn't really want to slide, but he's showing a little bit. He's thinking about it. And then you can see Gaudette 
looking to try to seal. And you can see this, this guy, uh, um, number three there, cut, kind of cutting the middle and bringing his man with him. And, and it opens up uh, Reeves for a shot. And, and I also want to talk about this shot, actually, as well. Uh, so let's take a look. You got a dodge, backside at the middle, a little seal. And then Reeves ends up shooting the ball. And let me tell you something about shooting when you don't have much time. So let's just draw the, the a line down the center of the goal and say that he's going to shoot it lefty. My opinion is that if you're rushed on your shots, you should lean right and shoot left. And if you have time on your shot, then you can pull it to the side if you want to. And the reason why is because it takes a little bit of time to hold the goalie up when you want to pull it. You understand what I mean by that? So if you want to pull it into this area, you're going to have to hold the goalie into onto the far side a little bit. And that takes a little bit of time. Hold them, hold them, hold them, and you can yank it to wherever you want. Load it. You can load a high it up here. You can pull it down low. If you're rushed on your shots, think about this. Lyle Thompson does this all the time. Um, John Grant Jr. would do this as well. When you're rushed on your shots and you've got to get it off quickly before you want to, then you're better off just leaning to the right and then just sticking the ball either overhand there or underhand down here. And I see Lyle Thompson shoot that shot all the time. So always lean and shoot far side if you're running out of time. And then you can think about holding them up and pulling it, putting it. You can really put it wherever you want to if you have time. And you're going to see, we're going to talk about some of the shots, and, and, and you're going to understand even more clearly why I say that as we go through this, because there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of examples on that. It's fun to watch this guy play. So, I mean, this kid, freshman, Nakai Montgomery, you know, he's quick. He's, he's, he's dodging more like a basketball player. I call this more like your double threat type of dodging. He's getting really close. He's bouncing. He's jabbing. He's hesitating. He makes a move. Um, stop and go. And now he's, like, turning corners again. Why not fake? Think about this, guys. In basketball, there's a rule called double dribbling. In lacrosse, there's no such rule. Reason in bat, you know, if, if you were to body slam his guy, get into space and start faking passes, uh, he could be all the way in. The sliders would go back. Um, it's just amazing to think about what you can do if you fake passes. Um, how about if he like basically hard? He's leaning in really hard right here. What if he hard pumps up the field and inside rolls at the same time? We've all seen that move before. It's a John Grant Jr. special. Physical dodge. A lot of bouncing. So there, um, um, Gutterding was faking. Um, but because he wasn't being physical right here, he really had nothing. So there was, there was really nothing open. There was two defenders actually guarding the, guarding the crease player. Great job with the stick out. Normally, you know, Reeves will, won't, won't lose it. He got a little sloppy with his swim, but I like that technique if you want to bring it over. Uh, swimming over a stick usually works pretty well. I think faking right here. Why not? Why wouldn't you? Dodge. Look back. Look back to the, to the mirror there. Pump ahead, and people won't show as much. Nice little job on the fade. Jumping over to a little swing pick. Again, I think Reeves could be faking here too. I think Reeves fakes here. A little hesitation, a little fake, and he's going to be able to – I, I kind of like – he shoots it over the top a lot. I – He's great at it. I, I, I personally like shooting around my guy a little bit more um, but um, or teaching that. But, um, but I, it, it's pretty obvious to me, I think, how much better guys can get. 
Got to run the arc there on the corner. Oh, is Andy, you on? Yeah, sorry. I got on late. Oh, yeah, cool. So really, yeah, let's talk about that. So um, and we got Andy Towers on board. Um, I invited him on and waited around for a bit, and I'm glad he's fine. They joined us. Um, so you, yeah, talk about that, Andy. So you look at, you know, obviously, you know, in terms of his move to his left side, he was the best in the country at that respective move. But, you know, I think where he breaks down right there, you got a couple of different uh, areas where – this would have been a goal for sure. Number one, you look at the amount of space he has as he's approaching the goal and extended here, James, right? Get it, get it like a, a stop before and then stop it, right? Stop, okay? So 11 is the only guy that's seen the ball. Everybody else is off ball. So they're basically saying to number two, we're not gonna slide to you, you're on your own against Ben Reeves. Good luck, have fun, right? Um, but he gets to the goal line extended and you notice, like you just referenced, he shoots the ball overhand, number one, um, that diminishes his angle in this instance. You know, I think a sidearm shot is absolutely the way to go anytime you are coming across the goal line extended from behind to above, number one. It just increases your angle. The same reasoning applies when you are approaching the middle of the field uh, from a wing dodge, right? It's the same concept. Anything that increases the size of the goal and increases the angle of your shot becomes the more fundamentally sound stroke in that instance, right? Um, you know, and then lastly, what I would say, which is vital in this instance, particularly because he's got the space and, uh, you know, he's got that half step is if he turns the corner hard, like Jordan Wolf used to do so often or still does so often in his respective um, dodges and attacks the front of the cage, there's a very good likelihood that, uh, you know, his defenseman slides off his back and he's all alone for a, a front side dunk or just runs the arc, the guy stays that half step behind him and he's able to simply look high and shoot a low shot between the goalie's legs. You know, instead he fades up on a 45, shoots back overhand and it crushes his ankle. So we were talking about the man up here that they're uh, – um, th th what they do here is what I would call – what I call a wall pass, and they only did it one time. I, I don't know why Division One teams don't do this more often. And, and, and the idea is when people are playing a five-man rotation on you, if you can ever get the ball inside and kick it out, everybody collapses on you. Everybody's open. <laughs> everybody's open. Right. And the only reason why – they made this guy made it harder on himself than he needed to because he caught it in a position where he could be slid to right on the catch. And he still ends up, like, you know, getting his shot off and makes it a, making it a really nice play. But, I mean, if you're playing against five-man rotations, I mean, it, maybe if you just don't have anybody that you can throw it into. But then your man up's not going to be that great anyways. But I, I, I personally think it's the biggest home run. If this guy had caught it a little bit wider, he had looks too, by the way. I mean, he didn't have to fight through a guy. He could have skipped it right up to 18. If the, the, re, the reality is he made a bad decision. He, was, he made a bad decision in where he was before he caught the ball and was forced to make a great play to, to get a shot off, let alone score. Um, you know, and, and, and where if he's dragging this on a curl, a high curl, and he extends two's slide, you know, another – five to eight yards he's shooting with his hands for he's going to hit that shot with more consistency than one where he has to actually you know upgrade off a catch and score where he, while he scores here the reality is it's a harder goal to score with consistency than one where he would curl to the ball extend the slide and have his hands free like you said for another upgrade pass maybe to the back pipe for a dunk or a skip through yeah. Um, rather than having to upgrade around his defenseman. And, and, you know, the fundamental, the fundamental thing on this play, and then we'll move on, is, is that he's not looking to see who's going to play him next. When the ball is being kicked in here and being kicked out, he needs to take a glance. And, that's, that's, and, and, and you'll see this throughout this film. The idea of looking away, turning your head on defense to see your man in the ball is the same thing you need to do on offense, which is totally. check where you are so that you can catch the ball in the perfect spot he doesn't look so he gets jumped right but he does make a heck of a play and scores the goal so he does
this is what Coach Meyer says is part of the evolution of a team wants them to peak as they start going into conference play. As they get home. Bunnell on the feed, Shanks looking to the front. And a score for Ohio State to start the third quarter. This pick angle is so awesome. I mean, Yale played such good fundamental defense. And yeah, no. uh, coming that's from, that's you know, if you go back to our live trainings or the micro trainings on big little stuff, and D Yale's trying to get underneath. They're not switching. They're not fighting through. And to be able to set that pick right there where this guy has to negotiate a pick age, it's pretty awesome. I really don't think this Dodger – I think this Dodger does a great job of going hard. But right now, he should be, like, faking passes. And number two, there's techniques that allow you to start your fakes right here. Right. If you watch Kevin Rice and the way he finishes, he, he does – what he does is Big right back. now he'd be faking high, and then when he gets to about here, his stick gets to about here, he'd be faking low, and then the goalie's stick would drop a little bit and he jams it into the space. Or vice versa, he'll fake low right here. Then he'll fake high, and then he'll throw it around the guy. The reason why this guy doesn't score is he doesn't use the, the early fakes, which is a really important come-around shooting drill. He just shoots and allows the whole defense to time it up. Yeah, I would, e I would even add that, you know, for him to slow down a half step to be able to win a sharper corner would also increase his angle. But I also yeah. the idea of, of the fakes, if it does nothing else than – makes the respective slide guys a step late to him, which allows him one more step to the front of the net. I'll tell you what, I love this cutback right here. You know, I mean, when you go take, start taking guy at an angle like this, and you, this is kind of what Andy was talking about, I think, in some ways with his – you know, with your dodging te technique is like he just cuts the corner and then is able to put the defensive position where they have to slide. Yeah, his separation step is to the goal line extended, right? And that's exactly right. Now, the other thing is, we talked about this before you got on the phone, Andy, is that Gutterding catches it and tries to shoot it to the far corner. I, I believe that when you're rushed, you have to shoot a leaner or an anti-leaner. So he should have, to me, he should have leaned right and front and left. Quick, quick release. Because anytime you're rushed, you, can't, you don't have time to hold the goalie and pull it. If he catches that and does a leaner and shows right and pushes it left, he actually has to be aware that he's got to actually take a little bit off of that shot to give the goalie time to read his body language and react to the far side of the cage and accentuate the near side of the cage is where he's ultimately shooting. If he shoots that too quickly off a leaner, he may hit the goalie before he has a chance to get out of the way. I'll tell you, what did you think of the Yale ride, Andy? You got any thoughts on it? Unbelievable. I, I thought it was the best ride we've seen in a long, long time. But it kind of gets back to, um, you know, the, the, the thinking of it all. A 10-man ride is great when you've got 
individual pulls that are physically imposing and can force people to roll back. You know, if, if you don't win the pull on short matchup in a 10 man, you're just yeah. giving up dunks. Yeah. Especially if it's the middle of the field type of stuff. Even yeah. here, the game is, what a play he makes on him. Yeah. That, that was an incredible play by 31. Who's that man? That's Joey Manown, right? That's another example where they shoot a step too early, right? That last one. Yeah, it's a nice rollback. I personally think that I like the way he comes out looking because it freezes everybody. But this, to me, to me, um, it, that he shoots, he shoots. The, the, when you start, when you watch Kevin Rice finish, he fa he's faking Rob Pinnell. They're faking before, they're faking high and low before they get to the goal line. And, and it opens up cage for them. And I feel like he just came around and just kind of shot it. And, you know, he hit the crossbar. He could have scored. But, but he didn't move the goalie. And I, I, I kind of feel like a high-low, high fake or a low, high, low fake coming around. I just, I just feel like in that instance, it's just got to be a low shot. I think it's high body language, staring at the top bar, low shot. And if, listen, it, it, nobody was on him. I think the fakes, all it's going to do is make, the, is make the goalie late. But I think the biggest thing in the end on those shots is you just have to end up taking that low because you can go low five hole and it's a goal every time you don't hit them and almost never do you miss the cage. Yeah. Andy, one of the things I was telling Steve and the other guys that will be on here is that um, I've got um, – I'm going to be splicing in examples of the stuff we're talking about. So there's some really great examples of the way Kevin Rice finishes. And it's so sick. It's so subtle. There's not a lot of guys that do it. Um, but anyways, um, but, but the, I don't, I totally disagree with you as well. I mean, if you can hold the goalie up and throw it around him lower, go five hole, he'll never get there. Third on the Hopkins list for goals this season. We're looking for the first strike at homework, homework tonight. Well, Stanwick provides a well set pick. Watch it here. And there's confusion defensively. I'm not sure what Albany was thinking there as Stanwick kind of pretends like he's going to X and then curls top side. Off the big save. Press towards X. The pick gives him a little extra step. That's all the separation he needs. And this is just a, a flat out speed dodge. You got to take care of Luca Prozzi. <laughs> Got to make sure he's out of the picture. Now Rice has the defense hung up, and he beats Aaron. Oh, starting to win some draws. Things are looking good for the guys in orange. Terrific sense by Rice. Do I feed? Do I turn the corner? That's why he shoots over 40% as well. Quick li little release. Beating Find out to take a shot at the midfield. Gets above goal and extended and scores. 19 in White's an offensive midfielder. He's a former high school attackman. And Syracuse smells blood in the water. Surprised that Duke didn't rotate a man and flush that matchup. Quite honestly, you got to send two. Great in 89, Quinn. My first championship was the 83 Syracuse Johns Hopkins game. 30th anniversary of that. There's another goal for Stan Strong. Shooting with low angles. He's about 60% on the season. But his crease awareness in low angle shooting. Magnificent. Gets that extra little step with his stick. Extends it out. And cashes in, Quinn. Terrific flat pick. Well, Stanwick with a burst. Stanwick, short side. He's going. Cool. Watch the defensive confusion. Opens the Dave Petromali, he's going to be one heck of a player if he isn't already four in the white. Jump shot, score. The confusion caused by the pick allows Stanwick to get top side right here. Creates. Here's Kaysner, who gets the start for the injured Zach Palmer, being guarded by Landon Carr. Gets a step and a goal just like that of the season, second of the day. It's a good, strong dodge. Landon Carr trips up. He recognizes that. Look, once he falls, then he recognizes it. He takes an extra. How about Manown going hard and um, Gutterding? This is interesting, too, because Gutterding, like, reacts late, fades up the wing a little bit. But Manown just goes so hard. I think it's Manown, right? This is, the finish that, this is the finish that Morrill should have just done this last time. Like, he, he's coming in, he stays high, and he just beats him low in the middle of the goal, in between his legs. It's like a goal every time. 
Yeah. Right? Unless the goalie guesses and drops, it's, it's literally a goal every time if you don't hit them. So one of the things I want to talk about here that's that's Dave Huntley always used to talk about this in shooting. And he would always say, never shoot right through your front foot. Because if, if D- Darius Kilgore, one of the greatest shooters ever in box across, said it in a different way. He said, when you transfer your weight from your back foot to your front foot, the goalie's expecting the shot. And if it doesn't come immediately, you've got them where you want them. And so you can see how – there's a little bit during the course of this crow hop and wind up, uh, he's able to transfer his weight, hold the goalie, and just hammer it. So you actually are hitching the timing of the release of your shot. Exactly. Yeah. Really good. That's really interesting. I'm stealing that. <laughs> I'll put probably my, do I'll it. Put you and Darius now. I'm gonna get Darius on one of these live trainings. Do one live from the res. Darius was Darius was a stud. So this is that example I was talking about before where Yale, you know, anytime they dodge, not every time, but a lot of times when they dodge and they don't have anything, they're just going to kick it to their best player with their shorty and set a pick right below goal line and put you in a tough spot. Now all of a sudden you've got a switch and now Reeves is going to be able to find somebody. Now this is an unbelievable release because he does not have time. Uh, to do much, but he catches this ball in the middle of a crow hop and is able to release it to the far side with just unbelievable uh, quickness of this release. What do you think about this, Andy? Uh, it, it brings me back to a kid uh, that played at Virginia a few years ago, David Curry. And what David Curry used to talk about, he, he you know, made the U.S. World Team. He was a first-team All-American at Virginia, one of the best midfielders to ever play the game. And his greatest strength as a player outside of his competitive spirit and swagger was definitely the release of his shot. And one of the things that he used to talk about when he would speak on shooting was how you catch the ball halfway through your windup. And this shot kind of looks like, see how he catches it deep? And when he catches it deep, all he's got to do is plant and follow through as opposed to reaching for it and pulling it back, planting and follow through. So I feel like the speed of the release is the reason yeah. that he's successful here. And that speed of the release is obviously um, magnified by catching it halfway through his windup. Dave used to talk about how he kind of gets his back to the ball before he catches these passes and how he's halfway through his windup. And that, that, that looks to be the case in this instance. The last point on this is just that it ends up being a, a screenshot too. And, and yeah. anytime you can shoot it around your guy, it's just so hard for goalies to see. Okay. So, um, you know, this is like a really nice pick angle. Um, I think, I think that, you know, 66 looks like he might have been thinking that he was going to set it for, for the Dodgers right, but then the Dodger goes, rolls back. He adjusts his pick when he sees the guy thinking about fighting through it. Now, personally, I, I think right now, Gutterding should be, or no, 27, who's that? Uh, Smith. I think Smith right now should be faking. And if he gives a quick, subtle look back and pumps the head, he can walk right in because there's no one's going to get there. The only reason why they're able to time it perfectly is because he doesn't fake and he doesn't give himself time. Right. The pump fake two, three steps below the goal and extended there will hold Keating from committing to that slide. And that's going to be enough for him to get around the corner and dunk it. No doubt. I, it, to me, faking has been like one of the biggest opportunities of this entire game. And I, I think it's one of the biggest opportunities for almost every player, actually. Here, uh, Duke's taking away the righty alley on, uh, on 18. So like a well-coached guy, he S-dodges him and goes hard, still is able to, draw a slide 
um, but good recovery. Really good aggressive dodging. Now this was an opportunity right here for faking as well. I mean, so 45 cats is it. Right to right, roll back, swim. Right now, if he sets his, instead of drifting right into the middle, if he, if he, if he sets his feet, he could then attack. But instead, he just sort of runs and allows everybody to kind of play him and gives himself no real estate to dodge into. So one of the things I just – I think about the double dribble analogy all the time. It's like anytime you make a move on somebody and you get yourself into space, you can set your feet right now. And now that guy is going to have to take an angle to you where you are, and it's going to give you an opportunity to attack with more pumps and draw and dump. Now, he might have been jammed up on the space, but the general concept here is the ability to set your feet anytime you want as if you were double dribbling in basketball. And the defensive guy, you force him into wasted steps. Exactly. The goalies throw a twister so often. You ever notice that? No, but it's smart. Especially the Canadian kid, wait to pick it off and stuff it. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's a nice quick release, eh? Yep, same sort of concept. You know, he doesn't catch it quite as deep as Ty did on the last one, um, but it's the same thing. You could have been faking here so, so well, too. You know, the Canadians, once they, like, have you sealed off, I was saying this earlier, Andy, is that – a lot of times they can just like hard, you can hard pump and hold your guy and hold yeah. the defense. Just kills the defense because there's no way all six guys are going to be disciplined on that. Well, just imagine, hey, Andy, if, if you were allowed to double dribble, do you think you could play in the NBA? <laughs> as long as everybody else couldn't. That's what I mean. Nobody else could. Right. But seriously, like, think about it. You can, you can, it, nobody fakes the way you really could. I mean, right here, this guy could be like doing a look back. He could be pumping up the field. He'd get, he'd get right where he wanted. He could have made this guy late. And then by making him go away and then come hard, it just buys everybody's time. Right. Now I want to talk a bit about this too, because this really should have been a, a better opportunity than it was because Duke doesn't actually play this really well. Um, Yale's not even like, I don't, they're, they're fighting through instead of going under. I think they could have done that, but you can see 45 here. Similar to this, the man-up scenario that we referred to before when the, the offensive player is not really checking to see what the best place in the field is. He's just staring at the ball, and he's drifting up the field, and he allows himself to be covered and allows this whole uh, you know, play that looks like it should have been a great opportunity to not be so great. Had he really checked who was going to play him next, he would have dropped down and caught it here and dragged somebody with him and been able to move the ball. 45, you mean? Yeah, 45. No, yeah. no question. No, he gets himself covered by elevating to the yeah. interior of the field as opposed to being sideline in. Right. And, and, and that's because he's not checking away from the ball. He's staring at the ball, and he's, like, reacting when he catches it instead of – right now he should be checking to see who's going to come play him. Right. He should or, have, or, or just ball cut left-handed. You know, just ball cut left-handed and stick it low and away. I mean, that's what I would do. Look high, shoot low, low and away. Because the slide's coming from the interior of the defense, and he's yet drifting to the interior of the field. So he's, he's getting himself covered as quickly as he can in that instance. Joey Sessa, so fast. What are your thoughts on this play? Uh, he's just fun to watch. You know, the fact that he didn't get trail checked here is shocking. If this was Graham Harden instead of number 77, Joey Sessa's stick would have been on the ground. Um, you know, what it shows is sort of a lack of discipline, a lack of patience by 77. Instead of putting the stick over his head and trailing him and waiting and waiting and waiting and then dropping the hammer, he actually goes fishing for it. In the process of fishing for it, he misses his chance to actually get it. I mean, to me, Joey Sessa got very lucky that the guy covering him was undisciplined here. The, the interesting part was, though, is that he, you know, he put it back into his right hand and, uh, it, you know, it, it, it baited the guy into, into, into fishing for it. Right. I mean, I don't know if he baited him or he was reacting 
Right. I don't think he baited them, but he unintentionally baited them. Right. I think what do you think about the little Yale zone here, the way that they were just like scraping hard and they got one good rotation in the end? I mean, it was kind of a nice little look. Yeah. Right there. Look at that rotation. Really, really well done. Yeah. They didn't do much of it, but it was a pretty good little wrinkle. I mean, Yale is so well coached. You know what's crazy, too, is that, like, you know, Andy Shea was, like, 6-24 and 24 in his first five years. I, I know. He didn't all of a sudden get a lot smarter, but they started giving him more than seven players a year. Well, what he told me, which was such an interesting tidbit about it, was that there was a family that came through, and I won't say who it is, but there was a family that came through where – they were such uh, cornerstones of allowing the Yale culture to turn the corner where it went from a situation where parents were in the stands, you know, MFing the staff and MFing, you know, the job that they're doing and, and all that sort of stuff. And then Andy gets a kid who comes in as a freshman and this kid's parent, his parents, but spearheaded by his dad who played the game, uh, you know, and, and basically was in the stands and snapped on a couple of parents that were MFing the staff. And everybody at that point sort of stopped doing that. It became unified. And the kid himself who was actually on the team, you know, also sort of anchored the future and now current culture of the program with, you know, not allowing any cancer to spawn in the team and squashing it out it's just it's uh again it's yeah. uh it's, that out. yeah what do you think of this dodge Andy? what do you like about it what well what, what i like about it is uh you know i love the offset i think the move is late to be honest with you i think that you know, two gets his stick on the ball or two, two gets his stick on Reeves. But the fact that Reeves accelerates and then steps into his top hand, he really it's buys himself enough time to get the shot off. And he does. And he's got too much heat to be stopped consistently when you factor in the placement of this shot with the speed of the release and the fact that he is creating a moment to shoot by freeing his hands. And that's, again, the benefit of bringing the contact. He could, he could have, if there was space, just walked right to the cup left-handed, right through the guy's top hand and walked right in. But due to the way the team defense was, you know, he let it go when he had to let it go, but he was deep enough where it went in. So watch him attack the top hand right there. Yeah. He's got him. And, and if he wanted to carry that, Jamie, all the way down that left he's tangent, that sweep tangent. Yeah. He's walking. I, I love I love the subtle little fake to this guy too, and doing that exact thing, turning the corner right down the tangent. He could have walked right in. Well, and and that's and that's what you were talking before. I mean, that's why Van Raphorst isn't part of the play. If Van Raphorst had stepped over, if he doesn't yeah. fake, Van Raphorst can step in, throw a one in, poke at his chest, and still get yeah. back out to his guy. Yeah. Which which he would do, innately, if the guy didn't fake. This is really not a great shot for Duke. But I like, you know, on these little uh, sweeps and pairs of offenses, you know, like he, he's settled here. I mean, first of all, if, oh, if, right. if I'm like getting bodied like this and being played that hard, I'm, I'm stopping and going. Yeah, hesitator or, or a tight roll. You know, a tight roll and he's walking right down the gut of the defense or one more to 27 is loading up. Like you said, he settles. And this isn't a shot. This is a turnover. It is, it is. And the tight roll, so Andy, I love the tight roll. I just tend to like to set up my tight rolls with the hesitator. Yeah, and that's what Mark Millen does such a good job of. Yeah. He actually fades to free his hands and gives himself yeah, was, a lower quality yeah. shot. That was not, it was not great. No. Duke, uh, I think number seven for Duke showed a few times and gave up this exact shot multiple times in this game. This was a great shot. This was right off the bar, right? Yeah. 
Great shot. No need to show. I mean, Ben Reeves is awesome, but you, you know, you're not, you're already not sliding to him much and he's not dodging here. He's going, well, if anything, it shouldn't be Van Raphorst that does it. You know, Van Raphorst loses his guy at the expense of showing. And that's just, yeah. Especially when you have, when it you, happened twice. Scott had scored on the exact same play earlier. That's right. Um, nice little swing pick. So, I mean, if swing picking isn't in your repertoire, check it out on the, um, on, on the uh, micro training for big little stuff. But, you know, when you know you got a lefty, jump over to his left side and, and, and put the defense in a position that's tough. And the other thing I really like about this, and Gutterning does this a lot, is that he, any time you can dodge and throw the ball to X with your inside hand, it causes full commitment out of the entire defense and buys time for anybody who's going to be the player at X. That's really awesome. And it's, it's a tough – I mean, it, you, you, it's got to be – it's because it's big risk reward right there. Yeah, I mean, you watch Canadians – I mean, like, listen, it, it, you can work on it, and, and it, you can't always do it. But if, if you can throw it to X with your inside hand off any type of wing dodges – Right. It, it, because as soon as you put it in your outside hand, people start recovering. But if you leave it in your inside hand, they have to keep coming. Yeah, well, that's the key. It, 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 it maximizes the unsettled opportunity. Yes, it, it maximizes the time. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And here, from a faking perspective, is if he starts faking passes up to nine, faking it inside. And, and when I was referring to so Andy and I were kind of saying the same thing, but I was saying it in a different way. So when, when we talked about coming around, you should just go five hole with that thing. That's because he could. But there's sometimes that you're finishing on these low angle shots where, you, you know, first of all, a fake would have bought him another step. And you could argue, like, just throw it around him low if you want. Right. But, but I, I, I think if he fakes early, this guy is just a step late. And that's where the double fakes work. And, and, um, and you can fake hot. You can show high and then put your head down and throw it high. Or you can show low and lift and like the Stan Wicks would do all the time. But faking is where it's at. And, and faking is the next evolution for the game. Um, when people start faking more, the way Tahoka does, Lyle Thompson, uh, Connor Fields, um, you'll you'll be amazed at what you can do. So this is a really cool little play. So right here, um, you know, Yale's been running primarily a three-three look, um, and, uh, and 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 Duke's been running a five-man sort of rotation. And so watch what happens here. Um, they they reverse the ball right back, fake it down, throw it. Now this guy is sealing the man. The ball is being faked with the with the uh, the little Ryan Brown 360. You know that one? Yeah. The little uh, this fake where it looks like you're throwing it and you spin around and it really emphasizes the fake. And nine is sealing the one defender. He didn't do a great job of sealing him off actually, but but remember that this this defender is trying to get over and this guy here has got the responsibility of the backside two players and he's being sealed off. So let's watch this one more time. Kind of a cool little play design. But, the, but nine just doesn't do a great job of getting in his way. Right. Well, they just got to be on the same page on which way he wants to invite the defender past him. Right? The, the guy's got to curl yeah. up higher if he's going to go underneath or he's got to, you know, fade if the guy's going to go above the pick. It's just basketball. So three lefties on that side, and they're looking for – I mean, basically – Reeves gets assists. Is this Reeves? No, this is nine, right? No, that's Reeves. Yeah, he gets assists all day just carrying on these little two-man and three-man rotations. So when they have two lefties on the side and Reeves out top, then, or, or when they have a lefty at the top center, then they do a two-man little uh, shallow cut. And when they've got a, le a lefty on the crease, they roll off with the crease. And because it's a five-man rotation, um, this guy is thinking about splitting two players. And all of yeah. a sudden, they can get Two wasn't goals. disciplined. Two didn't take away the more dangerous guy. No, he didn't. What do you think about this play right here, Andy, as far as, you know, it was a great play by Manown to score the goal, but what are your, what's your take on the fast break offense and the setup that they use here and what, the way they execute? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's awesome. You know, I, I remember this one from the game on Monday. Put it down and I'll tell you. See if you can freeze it right there. Right there. Perfect. Or just a little bit back. Good there? Yeah, right there is good. So even before the pass, it's probably good if you can go back a little bit. Right there, done. Right there, perfect, stop. 
So this is so perfect, the way that Duke is spaced, right? They understand exactly how Yale is going to rotate. And this is a traditional, uh, or this is a non-traditional rotation, almost looks like a reverse rotation where, they're, take, where they're, they're not going off of Brad Smith and they slide up field. So obviously that's gonna be the look. Um, but what I love about this is this backside attackman is right on the pinch. And what that does is that maximizes the length of the slide for the defenseman that's covering Brad Smith, number 27 here. If he tries to get down, he's got to stay with Brad Smith, to take away that shot. But if he doesn't get down to the backside, then you got the backside pinch open. Um, you know, similar to the other goal, this guy just makes a great individual play. But the reality is the spacing here for Duke is really, really good. I would say to 26, Brad Smith here, you always look off the backside pinch before you go to the ball side curl. And that, that does is that holds the secondary slide accountable to being super disciplined and playing the release of the ball and not getting a jump based on the body language, right? That would go back to, you know, something that you and I used to talk about a long time ago, and that's the benefit of Brad Smith in this instance coming down left-handed. Now, maybe the situation didn't allow it because he's got a pull behind him and it's off the draw. But, you know, again, you're always going to go through your read progression from most dangerous to least dangerous. And you put an emphasis on the secondary slide. And that's, you know, 11. Keating gets across, but the kid scores a goal on the upgrade because he takes a poor angle. Well, and, and one thing Duke practices a ton is the up the hash and shooting. So they practice this all the time, and they're just really good. He didn't shoot a jump shot there, but, but they, 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 you know, it's, it's the same idea. Really, really, you know, it's a, it's a fundamentally sound shot, right? Yeah. This play is so sick, okay? And, and this is, like, s such classic Canadian. But, right. you know, yeah, and they, they show a little bit off guard at, and he catches it. They rotate off. They rotate to him. And then watch him – hard pump with his rocker as if he's going to shoot a shovel. <laughs> I mean, he just goes hard with that and then comes top side and just opens himself up. I mean, think about it. If you're going to rocker, you catch that thing. It makes sense that, you know, he thinks he's going to have a shot at first, then he's overplayed. Now he's spinning and he hard pumps it right there. And it just gives him all the space and time in the world. Come back a little bit, James. You know, this is the other thing is, you know, this play is a classic example, and he probably would have scored anyways, but you look at the lack of discipline on, third, on uh, the guy that picks him up here, 49, right? 49 gives up the inside to go to the outside, and as soon as he does that, that's when he gives up a free-handed shot. That's number one. Number two is this is very uh, – you know, similar to the NBA games where you watch Steph Curry, where people are so concerned with his three-point shooting and they get up on him enough to try to take away the three-point shooting and he gets that half step and then he just kind of almost can walk right to the rim and just do like a slow one-handed finger roll. Like Gaudet is in total control. He could have been under waist high in mud and still been able to ride that front step, that half step that he had because he brings the contact the defender's too high. He, you know, he just, he just, he, he makes the choice to go over the top. And as soon as he does, he seals his fate. And then the, the underhand, I've been, I've been thinking a lot about this too, Andy. The way he's shooting, um, Teep does this a lot too, but they, they go right to an underhand windup. And sometimes Teep actually hitches from this underhand position. And so does um, uh, Fields. Yeah. Um, and it's like impossible to check. You can't trail check it when they shoot that way. <laughs> And you, you, it's amazing you can actually hitch from that position. But that, that, that little I – don't, I don't know if he meant to do it or if he was, this is what he does, but, but right there, the fact that hard pumps it makes that kid th – I think the guy thought for a second he got it. Out of position. You're not going to go. Good luck. Thanks for having me for a half hour. Yeah, all right, man. See you. All right, see you. Coach Towers. Game and luck. All right, so um, I like this too. Dodge, hesitate, dodge, hesitate. Um, if he's physical, he is physical right there. Right here, he's getting really physical. And that's, that's awesome. If he can fake passes, he's in. If he can fake passes, he's going to be in great shape. But because he doesn't, Keating's a lot. Keating can play him. So I would like to see him be physical even a little bit earlier and under control and faking passes. He probably could have faked the pass, got it into his right hand, 
and scored the goal coming right to the middle on like sort of an S dodge type of a play. Here, example of where he could have been so much more physical on his wind up. This is where you want to wind up and pin hands and spin. If you wind up and slam right into this guy, instead of trying to swim where now the defense is initiating contact on him, if he could have wound up, pin hand, and then spun to his left hand, he would have retained his angle. Instead, he's got no angle. Hang up. They don't want anything to do with it, so they just kick it over to Manown. And Manown here, this defender playing real soft. It's like that's the thing about the wings. It's hard to know where you are on the wings. And uh, give Manown credit for sticking a right-handed shot as a left-handed player. And look how many dodges it took to beat him. Okay, so he gets the ball. One, two, three. And that's what it's going to take sometimes is multiple rollbacks. That's three moves. Pump and drag. I don't like the way you're switching hands. I think it really screws them up. You want to keep it in your strong hand on man up. But maybe they don't have enough lefties because they got a righty up in the top or lefty shooter spot up there. So one of the things is so guttering is like being shut off. And the one thing that they did that I thought was pretty interesting was that he's cutting hard right around the defender you see that it's like he's using the defender as a pick and he's curling right around it which basically kind of seals him off a little bit and makes this guy really chase hard i was thinking about this and i was thinking to myself well what if he what if he came on the cut and put this player in a position where he was unsure of whether he should go under it or over it and I was thinking, they do it later in the game too. But if you were to run and don't, you know, run slowly at first. And then once you realize your guy's like in a trail position, so just clear this off, run, get your guy on you. And once you realize that he's in a trail position, now go and turn the corner. And I think you could use a defender as a pick really easily. And I thought that was a super interesting technique that you could use. And it's what they are doing. But I think it, that if you were a little, thought it through a little bit more, you would be able to draw your man into a trail position and he wouldn't be able to necessarily meet you in the same way. Really nice. Nice physical dodge right there. Turns the corner, draws the hold, gets the ball back to the inside. Now, what Duke did to get themselves back in this game, besides win some faceoffs, is they upped the pressure big time. And um, you know, we're always so afraid of coach in, as coaches of of pressure because it's riskier. Um, you know, obviously Yale's got the, their ten man ride pressure going on, um, which is is pretty awesome for them. And Duke's always been known as a, a team that's so athletic that they can put some pressure on you. And and really, it it turned this game around because yeah, if if if, that, uh, if Duke had not really started to crank up the pressure, I I, I think that they would have lost, uh, and it wouldn't have been even close to as as close of uh, of an outcome. Um, you know, they got it into being pretty close. Uh, here, let's talk about this. Um, there is a little bit of faking going on here. Um, you can see that this guy's sort of in no man's land. This, uh, this midfielder is doing a great job with his head up, being physical, sticking his body in, um, and is able to hold the whole defense where he wants it while he's looking for his um, skip pass, which I thought was awesome. I love this. This is classic double threat right here, you guys. So this, there's three ways to get into your double threat. Think about it. One, your man can approach you. You can be in a double threat. Two, you can, like, approach your man. And three, you can bounce into it like this. All of a sudden, he's, he's really close to his guy. 
okay? He, he's physical. He gets into his guy. He steps back. He probably stepped back a little farther than he needed to. Um, and all of a sudden, because there's no cushion, he's able to get a, a really, really great step. And they don't want to switch that off the pole. They don't. And, yeah, what a great job they did shooting the ball, too. Um, really impressive shooting out of the Yale midfielders. Amazingly impressive. But I love that double threat move. So this is a pretty cool little play that Duke ran. Um, so this is out of their classic 1-3-2 setup that can look like a 1-4-1 and a 2-2-2. So they've got their midfielders in their three-man motion. This guy will be the follow. Um, this guy will shallow. You know, this guy will follow if he takes the righty alley. And this guy will mirror if he sweeps. This guy will uh, uh, fade down if, if he sweeps. Um, so obviously you can see they're in this position where they take, takes the alley. So we got the pop and you're seeing now a little exchange. Gutterding starts on the crease and the backside guy is the backside low guy. And he just exchanges the, the X guy exchanges with really the lefty attackman. Um, and in doing so, Yale's just zoning it up. And this defender really kind of gets into what Jerry Berman would call the permaslide position. And because of the little exchanges and stuff, um, Gutterding ends up wide open. And this is the finish that Andy was talking about earlier, that he comes around enough and you just – if you can beat the guy with a – keep your chest – if your chest is up, you can hold the guy up. You just, look, look at the goalie stick here. Watch his stick go up. There's no way. If you can hold him up like that, and then how does he hold him up? Because he goes chest up, catches it chest up, low shot. There's no way they're going to save it. The double fake finish I was talking about earlier really has to do with when you don't have much angle at all. You, you Sometimes you see these guys score, and you're like, how the heck did he score that? And that's how. I'm going to show you some clips on that. So here's the pressure. Um, you know, Yale's, they're not, they're not letting you throw the ball around. Um, I, I liked the idea of what this, um, what this guy does because he tries to fake his way through the gap. Um, but he just faked a little bit too early. And so what you got to do is fake more often. Um, one fake isn't going to get it done as often as multiple fakes will get it done. But I like the concept of it a lot. Duke putting pressure on, and it really took Yale out of their offense. Didn't let them move the ball, didn't let them throw it around, didn't let them run their offense. And Yale, to their credit, played smart, disciplined, kept looking. Let's take a look at this shot. The reason why this shot got saved is because it was, it was pretty much, you know, well-timed play by the it, there was no mistiming to it it was just like he kind of shot the ball right in rhythm high to low at his feet these are the kind of shots that with no deception you know if you want to pull it down low then you have to hold the goalie up a little bit and he just gets his he gets his hand his bottom hand back to his stick and just releases it quickly listen if he puts his head down from here and shoots it high it's a goal guaranteed and that, that's a leaners are an automatic goalies Goalies literally drop to the crumble of the ground when you shoot a leaner in the game. There's nothing they're going to do about it. Really hard. It's funny because leaners are not hard shots to shoot. It's just hard to get people to remember to shoot them. Here's that angle I was referring to earlier on the way that Moral dodges up. Okay. It's physical. Now he rolls back towards the end line. There should not be a slide going right now. It's a slide decision. This is not a good time to go. He's clearly not going to score, um, but he always looks to feed from here. 
this angle, this feeding angle is one that every attackman needs to know. Get physical, post up, look, and then roll back towards the end line and then look inside. Um, you should not be sliding on that, but you saw this. It, it was open multiple times during the course of this game, and they cashed in once. Joey says I met him on the uh, train at uh, JFK on Thanksgiving Day 2011 on the way to the very first session ever of 3D Blue Chip. And I saw this kid in the train, and I was like, man, he's a pretty little guy. And then he ended up being a total stud. I wonder if he remembers meeting me there. But I remember meeting him. That's the take that Andy was talking about would be better. It gives him more angle. But I, listen, you know how much better Ben Reese could be if he started faking and he's already the tour it's on <laughs> it's just it's, it's just amazing. Stop, go, stick your body in. Not much happening right now because they're kind of like trying to kill the game, right? Lever pass attempt, bad shooting, bad play. That was like, you just don't want to do that. Yale was a little sloppy. The one thing that they didn't do great was, was uh, the middle of the field, third quarter, um, fourth quarter. They turned the ball over a fair amount. And then Keating really takes a poor angle here. He's not that fast of a guy. But generally speaking, when you're on the wing, you don't want to give – you just don't want to give – especially if you're not going to slide, which in transition you can't. You really got to play this more straight up. He gives him the underneath to the extent that he's never going to catch up. Then he, gets, then he uh, also fouls. So here is Guttering being shut off again, and you're going to see him make that cut again. This is a uh, nice little uh, shut off man up look, and he's going to cut hard right around a guy, and it sets up the diagonal cut from this guy as well. But like I was saying before, I think it would be pretty cool if he could get his guy to trail him a little bit more. Now he that guy took a really low angle, so maybe maybe that that, that my idea wouldn't work. And if this defender maybe was a little lower, it would work better. But I do like the idea of this cut around a defender like that. And it opened up the cut, the, the little cut in too. Nice little man up play for a shut off look. You have to stick that in the, uh, in the repertoire for shut off looks. Double cut, get your shut off cut, crease diagonal cut, and then kick it up, step down. All right, well, this game is almost over, folks. 